Hey guys, Zerka here, and if you haven't already seen the previous episode for today, uh, then please go back. You might want to, well, not even please, you might want to go back and watch that just so you make sure you're up to date with everything because it features the playoffs. Uh, and for anyone who has seen that episode, uh, you'll now know that I am going to be playing my next season in the Barclays Premier League. Uh, so this episode, you're going to see a lot of like kind of uh, like paperwork and stuff. It's kind of like the boring, nitty gritty stuff that you have to get. No, even the, but this is the bit that I find the most. It's kind of the bit that I find the most exciting uh, in uh, in. Career mode. This is about to tell my team in career mode, but obviously sometimes to watch this it can be a bit like tedious to watch. Uh, so I'm going to try not to uh, sit here and like talk about it and go like as you can see on the screen now. This is what I have, and when I because I'm going to get you're going to see a lot of transfer offers as well. So I don't want to sit there and like be like trying to keep up with everything. Going, I've just offered this for this, and I've just been offered this for this. I'm just going to kind of talk about my plans for the Premier League and what kind of plans for the series we have in general. Uh, obviously, I will kind of try and link to anything that's on the screen whenever I can. Uh, as you can see just there, like uh, Liam Trotter, uh, his contract's about to expire in two months. And, I've, and I tried to look at the contracts he wanted. He wanted £15,000 a week for his contract. And I, I don't think I can afford that. My wage budget isn't big enough to afford that, especially to accommodate someone like Liam Trotter, who is getting on age-wise and isn't one of my star players. So it's a shame because I'm probably going to have to lose him for free. And he is worth about like £2 million. So unless someone comes in for him, which I highly doubt, because they'll know that his contract's about to run out as well. Um, then I, I, it looks like we might be losing Liam Trotter. I tried to offer him a contract of a bit, a, kind of a cut price of what he wanted, and he rejected that. So it looks like we're not going to be able to keep Liam Trotter. As you see, I just started a uh, new season. Well, not a new season. I've ended the season that I was currently in. It's just loading up the new season of me going to be in the Premiership and stuff. And what I'm finding, what I'm kind of interested to look uh, to look out for is the players that the Premiership teams have signed because I haven't really kept up to date with that. Because obviously. Uh, we're in the championship, you're kind of away from that whole premiership thing. So you don't know, I don't know, you never know, like Chelsea could have signed Neymar, Man United could have signed Cristiano Ronaldo back. There could be all these all exciting new players at different teams. So I have to keep a look out of that throughout the whole season. Um, it would also be interesting to see what teams got relegated last season because I didn't check that. Uh, you see here, I've been given a transfer budget of 7 million and a wage budget of 35,000. Uh, the wage budget isn't very good. But the transfer budget is good because the transfer budget is 7 million and that is the same amount of money that Romero Vidal is valued at. And obviously Vidal is our kind of target, is our target who we want to get. And obviously the objective for the league is to avoid relegation. And uh, that I think I think that'd be no, I'm suggesting that'd be simple to do, but I'm not too sure yet because obviously I don't know. I won't know until I start playing the actual I start playing the actual Premiership teams with my team. Um, and the cups obviously the same as always. Um, so the transfer market is now open, so now it's time to. I think the focus first of off was for me was to uh, offload a lot of players. Um, to basically in order to do that like to set off low players so I could afford to obviously get Vidal in addition to that strengthen my squad because that's what I kind of went for eventually I eventually went for the fact that I needed to strengthen my whole squad not just my up front so in order to have the money to do that I needed to offload a lot of dead weight that I have or some players that may not be worth the certain amount of money they are worth now so kind of kind of cashing in on stuff that I can get whilst I can obviously you're, you're going to see that I got a lot of offers here um, for both David Edwards and Wallison now David Edwards uh, it was a free agent that I signed, so it'd be great to even if, if I can keep him anyway, because he's already valued at 3.3 .3 million, and he was great for me that whole season. As you saw, even in the playoffs, he was our hero in the playoffs, pretty much. Um, but I also do think that there are players in the similar position that are better than him for a similar price. And you see, I got a lot of offers there for like around like kind of interesting numbers that I was getting. Um, and I kept counting for 10 million, and you're going to see a bit further down the line. I get some uh, counter offers from my counter offer. And we'll see if we sell him or not. But uh, definitely some players, or like for example, Bittencourt, who I had in the first season, if any of you remember him. I would say that Bittencourt was a lot better of a player than David Edwards. So it could be, it could be possible that we could sell David Edwards and we could get Bittencourt to replace him. So it's kind of that's the kind of uh, look out that look that I kind of, that's kind of look that I was thinking of. What's the what word I'm thinking of here? That's the kind of uh, aspect that I was looking at it at. Like I could sell players and replace them with players for a cheap amount of money that would be either be of an equal quality uh, equal overall rating or a better over rating um, also obviously got a lot of offers for Wallison like crazy amount of offers for Wallison and with Wallison being the age he is I think he's kind of up to 26 years old um, I like obviously I know he's not fully at his peak yet his uh, his prime oh it's okay he's 25 years old but I got offers from like teams like Bayern, Man City, uh, Barcelona I think May United even came in for him um, you're gonna see all the teams anywhere on the screen but there's a crazy amount of teams um, and it's just it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be an absolute nightmare for me to kind of try and record this and be like, so I just got this off of him, this off of him, this off of him. We're well, going to reject that and reject that. 
it's a bit crazy, but you're going to see here that I get a counter offer from Lazio for David Lippers for 8 million. Now, you can see the chief executive believes that he is valued between 5.2 and 6.8, I believe that is. And whether or, not that, that, whether or not that is accurate, I don't know. But I still felt that if I could sell David Edwards for 8 million when I got him on a free agent, that, that is like something that needs to be done. Um, you see, he also got a lot of offers uh, for Wallace and again. I just kept sending the same counter for around 10 million. I want 10 million for Wallace and if I can sell him for 10 million, I'd be very happy. But in addition to that, if I can get 8 million for Edwards, that's 18 million. And then say, say, if, we start, say if we then sign Vidal for 7, it's 11 million more that I have that I can then go out and splash on bolstering my whole squad, get some new defenders in, maybe get some new midfielders in. So much stuff that I can do just with that, just from selling two players. Obviously, there's other players that I've still got to try and sell as well, like Andy Keogh, uh, lots of the other players in the reserves I've never even used. Maybe even LeQuint, who, again, I haven't even used, but he's worth one million somehow. Uh, I don't think he's that good. And obviously, we have Benzia already in the team. So if we can get Benzia and Vidal next to each other, I think that's a great pairing for, premiership, for the Premiership. Um, let me quickly talk about the objectives that I have for this series. Uh, I think this season is more about just bolstering and just trying to make sure I stay in the Premiership and I can push on. And uh, the objective is to eventually win the Champions League. And once I win the Champions League, I will probably end this series and maybe start a whole new career mode. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what the kind of feedback I get after that actually happens, if it ever happens. But that's the kind of main objective that I want to get to is for Mill to eventually win the Champions League, which is very unrealistic. Uh, and I think that was a, good, a big drawing point of my series, the fact that it was realistic. So I think by the time that I win the Champions League, it won't be realistic anymore because lots of the players will be uh, regenerate, uh, regenerated players. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the update for this episode. Um, stick around tomorrow. There should be another Korean World episode, as I said. I'm going to try and do them daily from now on. Um, so stick around tomorrow and you'll, you'll find out if we sell any players and if we buy any players. And uh, I shall see you guys in that episode. If you missed that episode, other episode, obviously, it's up, in the, it's up on the screen now. And if you want to check out my Let's Play channel, it's also on the screen now as well. And I shall see you guys in that next episode tomorrow. Goodbye.